Hello, I thought I'd show you some alcohol ink paintings today. I've got a craft market tomorrow and I realised that I've not got much left to sell on it. One thing that I usually sell are abstract alcohol ink paintings. I try and capture the sea colours in the cove near where I live and it's often quite green there. So I like to include green as well as the blues and turquoises. So to show you what I'm going to use today, I've got a very old, messy tablecloth I put underneath because alcohol ink can get pretty messy. Then I've got a glass cutting mat under there. Put paper towels out. I'm using craft graphics craft plastic today. Um, you can use Upo paper for alcohol inks. Uh, but I prefer the craft plastic because you can completely wipe it off if you need to. It doesn't stain. Alcohol ink can only be used on surfaces that are water resistant. That's when you get to move the alcohol, which has the pigment suspended in it around the surface and get different textures and movement going on in it. I've got a few different alcohol, ink, uh, alcohol inks from different companies. Uh, I've got uh, small bottles that I bought off Amazon. I've got one which I have metallic in and one which I just have plain um, isopropyl alcohol in. This is also isopropyl alcohol. Just, for, just to give me two different amounts of application. And these are Jackson Art alcohol inks, which I've used for a while and I think are um, totally fine and comparable with other alcohol ink companies. I buy the isopropyl alcohol in bulk um, from Amazon. That's the cheapest way to do it. And then these are Tim Holtz Ranger alcohol inks. Uh, I use a mask, a face mask. That completely keeps the fumes out and I work with an open window or um, open patio door and then I've got a heat tool <laughs> a very inky heat, heat tool right I'll get it set up and then I'll start filming I'll do voiceover for this part because obviously I'm wearing a face mask as I'm doing it so I've saturated the surface of the craft plastic with alcohol and then I'm just laying down big splodges of colour roughly where I want them to end up. I referred to the colour in the inks as pigment but these are actually dye based colours. I'm applying silver here at the bottom of the picture and the metallics act a bit differently. They are a lot denser and made from actual metal. So I'm using the silver here almost as a barrier between the sand colours that I'm using at the very bottom of the picture. Sorry, they're out of shot at the moment. And a barrier between those and the water colours above. Once I've got the colours roughly where I want them, I have to work very quickly now with a heat tool. The alcohol element of the inks evaporates very, very quickly, so you have a very limited time to move them around before they end up in their final place when all of the alcohol has evaporated. I also have a compressor with um, like a Copic air gun attached to it, which is cold air. So that extends the time a little bit more rather than using a heat tool. But I don't like the effects um, of the movement you get as much from that as I do from the heat tool. So I, I opt to have to, to work faster, but to get an effect that I prefer. So now you've got some parts of the picture uh, that have dried already. 
and that's where you kind of get these delicate lines forming the other parts are still wet it's a bit hectic because really you want to be working on all the different parts of the painting at once so you're just trying to step back from the painting and see which areas are turning into a mess and need working on the most immediately and just balancing the different parts of the painting all, all at the same time really. One of the problems is that the alcohol inks don't stay static. They keep spreading and moving uh, all the time until the alcohol has completely dried out. So you might have one area that you like the look of but unless you can dry it off and set it in that position it will keep it will keep moving. You can add in extra ink and extra alcohol but it can be difficult to stop it looking splodgy when you do that. I started using alcohol inks about 18 months ago and just playing around with them and I only use them from time to time so I'm by no means an expert and I've just kind of learnt by trial and error really. So in my initial layer of alcohol ink and alcohol is all dried I'm going to try and add some texture to it now. I was just showing you a Ranger spray bottle which I'm filling up with isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to carefully try and get a few droplets onto the picture. I'm using my hand to direct the droplets a little bit because I don't want them over the whole picture. And you can see that where the droplets have landed they've pushed aside the ink and left uh, white, little white specks. I'm just trying to create um, like a spray effect. And now I'm just showing you like the metallic shine from the metal inks that I dropped in. When I've got all the alcohol ink stuff out I try and make sure that I do a good few to make it worthwhile. So here I'm sticking to a very similar format for my next painting. Sorry, I've just noticed a really annoying dog hair on my sleeve. My long hair border collie seems to permanently be molting. So this is filmed in real time. And I've just gone back and timed how long it was between me starting to put the alcohol and the inks down and using the heat tool and it was under a minute. So you kind of need to get things down as quickly as possible and start moving them where you want them. I think you've got the gist now of, of what I do so I'll skip through and just show you a few highlights from the next few paintings that I do. Okay, so here I felt like the colour was getting a bit uniform, so I squirt a bit of alcohol in and it breaks up the colour and leaves a whiter area again. I'm just constantly moving and trying to blow the, the super wet areas from all sides, partly to stop them encroaching on bits that have already dried and that I like, and partly to try and get nice ripple effects in them. And now I feel like I'd lost the green element in my painting, so I've actually added in some more green and alcohol.
and now I'm just using up some scraps of uh, graphics craft plastic. I just use these in smaller frames or make them into cards. It actually looks like I've sped this segment up, but I haven't. This is still real time. So during the course of painting, um, this ultramarine kind of blue that I've been using runs out. And so I actually use it to um, spray right out of the bottle onto the paper once it's dry. And you can see that I'm getting these like tiny little blue specks, not as fine as when I use the spray bottle, but it adds it adds quite a bit of interest and I actually use that um, blue bottle um, on all of the other paintings just to add areas of blue speckles to them and here's one final one that I'll show you I mean it really is great fun doing this it's so um, uninhibited and it was my first real entry into abstract I think. It's very hard to be uptight with this medium you really do have to just go with the flow. You can use alcohol inks with a paintbrush and produce tighter results that are more controlled or I've seen people apply the ink in much smaller quantities and use like a hand air tool to move the ink around in, in very small ways at a time. But for me, I think the enjoyment is just going a bit crazy and seeing what happens. And here you can see I'm just dropping alcohol straight out of the small dropper bottle to create larger white areas. And here's me using that nearly empty blue bottle to squirt um, blue ink directly onto the dry areas. Okay, so here are all the paintings that I did just there.
some of them that I'm not totally keen on I'll probably chop up and use for card fronts um, but we'll see how that goes um, sometimes I tweak them a little bit more after the initial um, laying down of the alcohol ink the next stage is to varnish them so I use um, I use this Kamar, Krylon Kamar varnish first of all and I use about three or four thin coats of that to protect the alcohol ink from the varnish itself from the uh, sorry from the next layer itself this doesn't seem to affect the colors or um, dilute them in any way and then once the Kamar varnish is dried I put this UV resistant coating on and I do it in gloss if I put this straight onto the ink this would damage it um, you really need to have that that Kamar varnish layer to protect the ink from this UV resistant spray okay so I'll get on and spray them and then I'll come back when I finish mounting everything so all of the paintings have had about six coats of uh, varnish and UV protective spray on them now and are fully dried out and I just thought I'd show you how I've prepared them so we've just got a standard white frame that's got like um kind of textured mount board round and I name these um, after the cove which is where I got the inspiration for the colours from really at Rawnance. Uh, so I've got a framed one there and then I've got a couple that are just um, in mounts Then I've done a couple that are um, in box mounts, so they're they're kind of um, floating. So I've mounted the actual um, painting onto a mount board, and then there's like a foam layer to float the painting up. So I've done a couple of those, um, and then some of the smaller bits I'll make into cards. Um, yeah, just simple white cards. And then there's just a smaller painting there with some of the smaller scraps of um, craft graphics, craft plastic that I was using up. So yeah, just to, just to show you those. Um, not sure I gave much close-up detail. I'll, I'll zoom into a couple of the uh, pictures. it's starting to get a bit darker now but um you can see the gold and the silver that i am um, that drop into the mixture i just think this medium is really nice for for throwing water and giving the impression of um spray and movement there were a couple that I didn't frame because I wasn't I wasn't as happy with those ones Well, I hope that was interesting and give you an insight into my alcohol ink process. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye.